Hello again, this is the second part of creating a concrete pillar and in this section we will be painting our textures. So here's where we finished, there's our pillar, our normal map and it's connected to our principal shader. And now we're going to paint some textures onto here. So as usual I've got reference images on my other monitor with all different kinds of pillars and this one's a great one that I'll probably use as a reference for the texture. Also a great website called textures.com has some fantastic concrete materials and if you sign up you can get 15 free credits and I went for the dirty concrete materials here and they're great for painting. So let's start. I'm going to add a new material down here and I'm going to call this I'm going to call it pillar color 2 as I've had a bit of a practice and do it 248 2048 by 2048. You can go higher but it's important to do it in multiples of 1024. And let's save this image and let's bring it into our node editor. So I can just copy this one, Shift D to duplicate, change it back to color data, zoom in a bit and click on the little double arrows there, which are tricky to see. There we go, the double arrows there and choose pillar color. And let's hook this up. I should have created, when I create a new color, I should have changed it to gray. That's a bit easier then. But what you can do if you forget to do that, like I have, you can go across to paint mode so texture paint mode here and let's go to the fill brush and fill it in grey. And that's a good way of knowing whether it's working. Another thing about this is in the options, it's a really good idea to set your bleed higher than two. I like to go up to about eight. And the bleed is over the edges here. So if I fill again, you can see now it's overlapping the edges a bit more. And in fact, I'm gonna put it up to 10 probably even better. Let's do that again then. And there we go, it's all working. Now strangely it's not showing up in my viewport and this is because I'm on rendered mode and my image isn't saved. What I actually need to do to paint is be in material mode. You can be in texture mode, I'll show you what texture mode looks like. Okay there's my low poly and it's the grey colour. If I go to material mode it actually shows just about my normal map which is very useful for getting an idea of where I need to paint. There's slight glitches, but it's a pretty good indicator. So the first thing to do is get a bit of a base color down. So let's import our textures. Go to tools, make sure you're not on the fill brush, but you're on the texture draw brush. Move this down for now. And here's my texture just here. I can press new on there, so there's a new texture and it's called texture.001. I can then go over to my textures, which are in here, under the checker panel, and make sure I'm choosing the brush texture 001. Press open, and then you can find your brushes and textures. I like to put all my textures in a folder. So there it is in there. And then I need to change the brush mapping to stencil, and then it will come up in the viewport. To resize, hold shift and right click. To resize the brush, press F. And I'm just gonna put it all the way up to maximum and paint this on. If you press shift space, you can go to full screen mode. What you've got to be careful of is stretching of the texture. So if I go right on the edge here and paint, you can see it stretches the texture around the corner. So it's good to do it at angles like this. And really I should do the top one first. But I'm not too fussed about the top texture. So I'm assuming in my game it's something I wouldn't see. Same with the bottom. I'll just fill that in with a color and then sort the bottom out. For these first early bits I'm actually using a mouse and I'll use my graphics tab tablet when it comes to the more detailed work. If you want to see what it looks like without the stencil you can just cross it out, it's still there so you can go to your textures just here and you can obviously add new ones but it will remove the stencil for you so you can have a good look at your model. And that's a nice uh, simple base. So the next bit for me will be filling in the crevices 
Now some people like to bake ambient occlusion. I don't find it works that well for me. I've just never found it to be very useful. So I like to actually paint it by hand. And for this, I use the multiply brush. So make sure you haven't got a texture. So press the little cross that's down there and go to the multiply brush and bring the strength down. This is where I'll start using my graphics tablet. So you should hopefully be able to see the crevices. The normal map should help you. Bring the color down so that it's not pure white. If you try and paint with a multiply brush and it's white, it won't work. It's got to be a dark color. And just subtle effects, particularly deep into the crevices. If you notice any areas like this where there's a glitch, then you'll need to go back to your texture map. So back to mix, find your texture, and just tidy them up a bit. But remember to turn your color back up to white. My strength is fairly low, that's why it's taking me a few brush strokes. And I might tidy the top up a bit more at this point. And I'll take this chance as well to look at the bottom, but I need to use the base of my texture as it's darker. Press Alt F to zoom in to that particular location and make it central in your scene. And there we go, let's turn the texture off now and go back to my multiply brush. Bring tone down and bring the strength down. And let's hunt for more crevices. Okay, that's working reasonably well. Now what I'd like is some moss to be growing up uh, from the bottom. So I'm imagining this to be in a location which is becoming overgrown, a post-apocalyptic environment. So let's go back to our texture. I'm going to put our brush back to, back to white, turn off multiply, back to mix, and let's have a new texture. Shift space will get you out of full screen mode. And let's have a look at our brush two as this is texture.002 here. So we are on brush two. And then open up our decals I've got here. So if you look at decals on textures.com, you can find this one. And the great thing about the decals is that they've got an alpha channel. So I can paint on and it won't paint any color in here. Shift spacebar again. I'm gonna make it a tiny bit darker. You can actually affect the color of your textures. So if I do this, I'll make it a bit yellowy, but I don't want to do that. And I might have some coming down from the top as well. So I can rotate my brush by hold, right clicking and holding down control rotate it like that or I can just change the angle to 180 which is down here so it's important to start with the base color and the big block colors as it were now I'm going to go into the detail. So there's a bit of crumbly rocks around the place and I'm going to try and highlight those with the screen and multiply brushes. So I can turn my texture off now, go back to the multiply brush. I'm going to darken the bottom really slightly. And now go right in. And here's where you can see the quality of the textures really. Uh, if I had an account at texture.com I could download um, high resolution textures but I'm assuming this is gonna be a scene from about this distance, which I think's okay. If you still get glitches like this, you can use the smear brush. So get the smear brush, and then you can just smear it out. You do lose detail in your image, obviously, because it kind of blurs it. 
And actually I'm going to use a different texture for these really crumbly bits. This is a common mistake I make, I'm, I forget that I'm in a certain brush and put a texture on it. So watch out for that. I need to go back to my texture drill brush. And because I've added texture, it's still in here. You may also get this issue where the image is stretched. Just press on image aspect and that will reset your aspect ratio. You can see when I zoom right in, you can actually start to see the topology. And that's where it's slightly better if you retopologize and don't get this sort of stretchedness. But that's about workflow, practice, and how much time you have on these things. I move my mouse off the screen to see what the effects of my brush are having, so I can see it without the stencil, and then move it back on. When you're mixing different textures, you will get problems like the resolution here of one is different to the others, and the colors often are different from one to another. You can either change the colors in Photoshop and adapt them, you can try and adapt them up here whilst painting, or you can just try and match them up whilst you're painting by adding a base color in and then using the multiply and screen brushes once you've got them down. There's quite a lot of trial and error when you're using texture brushes. Remember also to save your image. So I've got to a point where I'm reasonably happy with how it's going. Obviously there's some detail to do, uh, but it's a good idea to save the progress. Now I'm going to add some detail and what I'm going to do for this is use a texture mask. So I've got no texture highlighted at the moment. And in the texture masks, this is where you can use types of brushes. So if I press new here, go back over here to texture 005, just double check texture 005 and press open then I'll look at my brushes and I can use these alpha brushes now and something like this will create a nice brush effect so if I go in now and I want to highlight the edges here so I'll change it to screen make sure it's nice and bright I'll change the mapping to random I think that gives a better effect and just test it out which is not too bad it's best to be very subtle with this and just build it up slowly in layers. You can also, under the stroke method, put the spacing up just a touch. Spacing is the distance between your strokes. And the jitter, so it adds a bit of randomness to your brush. And I'm switching between multiply and screen to highlight crevices and sharp edge. Remember with the multiply you must bring the tone down. Here I've set up four brushes, Multiply, Screen, Normal, and Stencil. I'm unhappy about the resolution of my base texture, so I'm just improving it slightly in areas. But really I should have checked that right at the start.
So I've saved my texture. Let's see what it looks like in rendered mode. We need to do a glossy and roughness map. I find the best way to do this is save your texture, your color texture, and then open up Photoshop. Now this is quite nice because we can see the areas that need to have slightly more gloss and those areas that need more roughness. And in this case, they are actually a darker tone. So simply I can add a layer mask to this with black and white. I like to work in a glossy workflow. So white would be full gloss, so fully reflective, and the dark patches are fully rough, so no reflection. So the moss, of course, is going to be very dark. So I can take down the greens and the yellows, and that should make them very dark. That's great. That's great, so now we know the moss is all covered, and there's very little reflection from that. We can always use a color ramp in Blender as well. And now I'm gonna add another layer mask on top of that, of the levels. Concrete isn't particularly reflective. That's not to say it hasn't got any reflection. And probably about here is good. So let's save this to see what it looks like first, and then we can come back into Photoshop and see which areas we need to affect. So let's duplicate our color change it to non-colored data. And because Blender uses a roughness, we have to invert it because I'm working in glossy, so it's just the reverse. So Shift A, uh, color, invert. Bring that in there. And let's find our PSD. I'll change the name later once I've settled on what I want. It's done quite a nice job. What we could do is make sure we've got an environment map so we can see some sort of reflection. So you should see something like this and add in a texture, environment texture. And you really need an HDR environment, which you can download from places like HDR Labs. What you might want to do is play with your three point lighting just to see what sort of effect you can get. And you might want to experiment with different HDRIs. And I'm relatively pleased with this. I think the moss could probably do with a bit of work, uh, but I'm running out of time. I think I'd probably put, like to put a, a slight bump on there. And of course it does depend on your environment map as to how it looks a lot of the time. So maybe experimenting with a few of those as well. So that brings us to the, to the end of the series. I hope you enjoyed it. And let me know in the comments as to whether you like these sort of series and you want to see more, or if you have any other ideas, or if you have a different workflow that you like to use and you can offer me some advice as well. That'd be great. Thanks for watching.